But Moses stepped out and killed a man before his calling. He, he thought that he knew what he was supposed to be doing. And so he went out and he saw an Egyptian being beat up by an uh, 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 Israelite being beat up by an Egyptian. And he killed a man because he thought he was supposed to be delivered. And finally, he, all his people looked around and said, that ain't what deliverance is. You got no deliverance. And he got afraid because he knew that he would get word to Pharaoh. And he left for 40 years. Say 40 years. No different than the 40 years they roamed in the wilderness. So out there 40, I'm studying on that. But if somehow we can be delayed in our lives because we don't get on holy ground. So finally after 40 years, God still used him with Satan for evil. He was out the shepherd in the flock. And finally God called him to burn the bush. And he said, listen, take off your shoes for now you're standing on holy ground. I believe many of you today are standing on holy ground. There's going to be a ignited in your life. Speak that over today. There's going to be a fire up under your shoes, up under your boots, up under your sandals. I don't care what you got on. There's going to be a fire. God's putting fire to your feet today. Hallelujah. Just realize that what is about to move in your life is about to be life changing. Not only for you, but everybody around you. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, I want you to sing a, a solo. He's going to sing, sing for us, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Amen? Uh, yeah. How can you know Jesus needs to be in the center anyway? Yeah. When he's not in the center of your marriage, you don't have a marriage. If he's not in the center of your finances, you ain't got no money. Amen? Jesus got to be the center in everything that you do. Amen? When they were in fear, Jesus, the Bible said, Jesus stepped in the midst, in the center. That's where your peace comes from when you put him in the center. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, I thank I thank God for the opportunity to invest. I thank God for how, how the Holy Spirit was moving this morning. And I thought I don't think he want me to do Jesus here to set up my job. I want to be in the flow of what the Holy Spirit is doing. Amen. Wayne, Minister Wayne. I thank you for your boldness to step out and let the Holy Spirit use you. Because the Lord wants to deposit a new soul. He wants to deposit a new soul in his people. This morning at my congregation, the Holy Spirit deposited a song in me. And it was talking about yielding. He was talking about yielding. A lot of times when we say, have your way, have your way in this place. But he wants to have his way inside of us. Yes. We're living, walking epistles yes. unto God's glory. Minister, minister, would you just play that melody that you were playing? Wayne talked about how our gifts in the body of Christ and talked about unity. Hallelujah. I mean, the Holy Spirit had a lot to say in this worship service this morning. He wants the members of this body to be unified, to do the work that he's called us to do. And that's going to take yielded vessels. Yielded vessels. Minister Henson, we're not going to do Jesus in the world. If you will, just flow, flow, and I'm going to catch you, and you're going to catch me. We're talking about yielding. We're talking about surrender. There is nothing that God can do with us unless we surrender. You see, he didn't make robots. He gave us a spirit by which he can communicate with us. And he's looking for yielded vessels. Yielded vessels, vessels that he can show his glory through. Yielded.
God, we I give God praise and glory. We have to begin to, in this season of our lives, this is what the Lord wants to grow the church. We want to learn how to be able to flow together in the Spirit. We got to know how to allow the Spirit of God to do what He wants to do. Amen? Amen. When we do that, we'll be healed. We learn how to yield to what He's doing. Amen? Amen. When there's a green light, you go. When there's a red light, you stop. When there's a yellow light, you gotta know how to yield. You gotta look both ways and know that, you know, God is God, and you've got to show us something. Amen? Amen. Let's look around. Let's make sure. Let's, let's begin to examine ourselves in doing that time. So I thank God for the move and the flow of the Spirit. I thank God for the river that's still flowing. How do you know that even as, as the river's flowing, it gives God the potential to, you could open up your potentiality to be able to receive what God has for you. Amen? Amen. 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 I want to be real quick before you because some of this I'll probably teach tom uh, uh, tomorrow night on Bible Reveal. Uh, <clears throat> this is what I'm going to share with you today. I'll just be kind of like a prelude. I'll just kind of tone, tone it, you know, cut it in half. I want God to have his way, but I also want to be uh, conscious of the Lord's time. Amen? Amen. 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 Uh, one of the things I'm learning about uh, my own life that there are things that God is beginning to show me how to prioritize. It's something how we think we know what we're doing, or we think we know how to put things first things first, but I want to really share with you about divine priority. Say divine priority. It's one thing to prioritize, to prioritize your life, and that's a good thing to put things in proper perspective and put things in priority, but there's also a divine priority that we must begin to understand in the Word of God and for our daily lives. Amen? And if we get this priority that I'm going to kind of give us a foundation for today, your life will never be the same. Not only will your life never be the same, but there's going to be a divine change in your life. How many are you ready for a change? Amen. One of the things I've learned that change is never change unless there's change. Right. And change don't feel good. I don't care what nobody said. When you make a decision to make a change, I'm telling you, when you yield to God, things don't feel good. It's no different than you going and lifting weights and say, I'm going to make a change. I'm going to do something with this weight. Stop eating for a few days and watch what you do. Watch out. Change is very uncomfortable. But I'm telling you, there's a reward after you allow God to begin to transform your life. Yeah, it don't feel good in the beginning. But as you continue on, you'll see the fruit of what God is doing in your life. Amen. I ain't say the fruit of your labor. I'm talking about the fruit that comes out of the spirit of God, the Christ in you. And you'll begin to see the glory that's manifested in your life. I'm telling you, church, it's a, it's a whole different aspect. You'll be on a different plane in life, and God is going to show you some things that will really help you change your perspective and your perception in these last days. Because church is dark out there. You better look around. You better look around. Amen? Amen. All the creation is crying out. The ecosystem is crying out. Come on, church. Y'all don't see it? Amen. Look at our politicians. Look what we, look what we got left. Look what we got left to make decisions for our life. The Bible says the supplications and prayers and intercessions and giving the thanks we made for all men, for kings, leaders, and those that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Do you really think that's really happening right now with what we got up there? Now I pray for our leaders, but come on, church, if that's all we got, we, be, we really need to get ready. We really need to get ready, you all. So I want to really get, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is what God just put in my spirit this morning. And so I want to share with you divine priority. Now, I'm looking at it from a, from a grace perspective by putting grace in its proper place. One of the first things to prioritize in your spiritual life is learning how to allow and put grace in, your, in its proper place. Now, I want to share this. I, I like to keep saying things over because it'll get in your spirit. But I'm here to let you know grace is not a message. Grace is the gospel. Grace is the person of Jesus Christ. This is not a message. This is not no, no, no thing we're running on the train to go on this new gospel. No, we're not. This has always been the gospel. Somewhere online, we never got church the right way. I'm telling you, from a time I was a kid, when I started reading and understanding now, as I got older, I said, oh, Lord, I got to put away childish things. I had to learn it. I wasn't taught right. Come on, church. Come on, ain't nothing wrong with this. You gotta, if you want to get to where you're going, you've got to get the truth about your life. Amen? Amen. I had to be honest with myself. Amen. I was tired of praying and not seeing the answers come. Tired of acting like everything's okay and then come to church. And you really don't want to come to church because you 
know you ain't getting what you're asking for. Then you mad with God and you're frustrated and you, and you despondent and you're discontented, but you still come to church. Something's wrong with that. The Bible is truth, you all. This gospel is truth. This grace is truth. If it's not truth, then why are we trying to come here? Come on, church. We got to get to understand that maybe could it be that it's something that I'm not putting in priority from an aspect of spirituality. Amen? Amen. All right. Now, we're going to get this because we gonna, your, your whole mindset going to change about, about this understanding and how to prioritize. You're going to be able to walk around. You're going to be like, uh, that ain't for me. Uh -huh. mm, I'm not eating that. Hold fast. That which is good. Okay, that's good, but I'm good. Mm. Amen? Amen? I'm like sunflower seeds. You know how to break it, eat the right parts, amen? amen? Listen, you all, Jesus is full of grace and truth. Now, I want y'all to catch this now. Go to John 1 real quick. I'm going to keep reading it to you because you're going to get it. It's going to ding in somebody. I'm telling you, every time I read this, it's going to ding in your life because you're going to find out that, oh, in John 1, man, it says, the Word was made flesh, verse 14, and dwelt among us. That's Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was who? Boy, y'all some good Bible stuff. The word was with God and the word was who? God. Now, Jesus comes on the scene in John 14. The word was made flesh. That's Jesus, right? Emmanuel, God with us. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. This is John talking because we didn't see Jesus. He saw Jesus. The word was flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory. The glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Go to verse 14. Now, this is what I want y'all to see here. Jesus being the word. The word is full of grace and truth. But this is what I want y'all to see here. This was the question that was posed to me this morning. It got me. I had to change my message around because this is what God said. I want you to teach on divine priority. If Jesus is full of grace and truth, don't miss this. What he's full of, you and I must receive from. Jesus is out -washes. His whole life is to give what he's full of. So he wants to extend his undeserved favor to you. Look at verse 16. It'll show you right there. He was full of grace and truth from John 14. But verse 16 says, go down. Yeah. And of his fullness, what he was full of, grace and truth, it's the same verse, uh, going down the next one. Of his fullness have all of us received, what else? Grace for grace. So in the fullness of Jesus, the fullness of the word, you and I are supposed to receive out of that fullness grace. Y'all got to get this now. And of his fullness, Full of grace and truth, you and I must receive the fullness of this grace. Amen? Amen? So from grace to grace, you must begin to receive. So here I want to share with you all. So as we get into the word, and we begin to understand the word is full of grace and truth. God is saying in this season of your life, begin to go through the door and receive the undeserved favors that, that belong to you. Quit trying to labor to try to do something that you don't have to. Begin to receive of his fullness. What happened is we're trying to get full on our own selves. And God is saying, just receive of my fullness. Jesus came as we died for church. He died, listen church, he died so that we can receive of his fullness. Now this was the, the message that I really want to share with you all. Because I want to share with you how this dispensation, say dispensation. dispensation. This was a period in which when Jesus came on the earth, he's born into the earth, he will God with us. For 30 years, he learned from his father. He went to the temple and he began to teach the, uh, the, the uh, different uh, doctors of the law and everything. But he knew that he was about his father's business. At the age of 30, ministry started for his life. Three years, you all, three and a half years, he had a ministry for three and a half years on how God anointed him. And he was anointed and appointed to begin to set the captives free, show us what it's all about. Amen? But his whole, whole reason for coming was to fulfill all the law. Don't you miss this now? He was dealing with a chosen people, Israel, who understood that a Messiah would come. But what they did not understand, they could not keep the law. Jesus would come and fulfill all of the law. Say all of the law. Man could not keep the law. If you missed one little tittle of the law, you was guilty of everything. So there was no man that God could find. Is there anyone? Jesus said, Lord, I'll come in the volume of the book and I'll do what you wrote about me. And Jesus came in, in, in flesh. And he dwelt among us. This was the word full of grace and truth, you all. But here it is. As he stepped on the scene, you got to catch this. That's why you got to get on Bible reveal. He began to walk this thing out. And the religious leaders was trying to destroy him. Read your Bible, you all. When grace began to walk the earth, ready to be full of grace and truth. 
he started breaking the Sabbath. Because all of these are laws that were given, but no man can keep them. He said, you got your herb. You're going to ask me, why do I heal on the Sabbath? But you go and get your ox for your labor, and you ain't got no problem with it on the Sabbath. But when this man, and he stretched out his withered hand, and you saw a miracle, you get mad. He was fighting against the old people who should have known. The stone which the builders rejected became the head cornerstone. And they didn't even realize that the foundation that they needed, they weren't building on it. They were about to destroy it. I don't want us to be that way. We got to get to a place where we understand this message. This dispensation that Jesus was in, he came to fulfill all of the law. Don't you miss this? When he, got, when he fulfilled every tittle of the law, he put it on the cross. Every ordinance, every statute, every precept was put on that cross for you and I. That's Colossians 2. Read it if you don't, if you don't believe what Pastor Cook is saying. Every law, every ordinance was nailed to the cross. Every ordinance was nailed to the cross. Why would he do that? So watch this. He will fulfill what we could not fulfill. And when he got on that cross, what was his last words? It is finished. It's done. It's abolished. You can't fulfill it, so I did it for you. Now I'm going to extend grace to you. I'm going to give you what you don't deserve. Hallelujah. That's the good news. Ain't no good news about you need to stop doing this and stop doing that. You want to curse. And if you don't, God will do this to you. God will do that to you. What do you think? You call that good news that you can't keep and I can't keep? The good news is that Jesus paid it all. Every, every ordinance is nailed to that cross. And then he took all those laws, and when he died, watch this, he went down in the hill. And they were all waiting on him. And they said the, the dogs of Bashan, he went down in the hill for three days. And they thought everything was wrong. And on that third day, whoo, he got up with keys. It's access to you and I. And he said, Behold, he I me who was dead, and now I'm alive forevermore. And yo, yo, I got the keys. <laughs> I got the keys to hell and hell. I'm going to take these with me and I'm going to get up to my dad so you all can have access in heaven. Amen? Give God a hand for it. We must learn how to prioritize and understand that this is not by anything you can do, but it's by grace that you're saved. Amen. It is by grace that you're saved. And if grace saved you, what you think going to lead you all the way to the end? It's grace that walked me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. Somewhere along the line, we got saved by grace, and we live by the law. We start living on our performance. I must do this, and I must do that. I have to pray this many hours, and I have to do this, and I have to do that. And sometimes we get so religious in our mind, where if we get to doing certain things, and many of you may have done it, I've done it, where I've got to a point where i got to do it this way, and if I don't, then, now watch this, and if I don't do it, I'm condemned. Grace never condemns. The law condemns. So when you know, I'm going to show you how you know when you want the works. You come to church and you feel like, or you come to a church and everybody look at you like, mm-hmm, where you been? <laughs> Instead of saying, hey, how you doing? Praise the Lord, how you doing? How many of y'all felt that way? You've been church about three or four weeks, then I'm going to praise her. And you know, people start looking at you praying. What you doing? Uh huh, praise the Lord, hi. Don't even say it, just say hi. <laughs> Don't even say God bless you, hi. Show sure up, Pastor, praise the Lord. That's all up under the, the, the cloak of condemnation. Yes. That's all kind of nature. You got to get this thing. So you know that ain't grace. Amen. Man, the Father, come on, y'all better know what you miss this. The Father gave all this inheritance away yes. to his sons. And the one went out and did all he wanted to do. Yes. That made you mad yourself. That means I'm going to kill him when I see him. Okay. You know, took all my money and spent it. You going to come back? What you coming back for? <laughs> so, come on, y'all. We got to get, get it out of this mindset that we don't think like that. This flesh is like that. Uh -huh. But the father gave us a beautiful depiction of even after his son was in the pig style, spending all up on, on riotous living, he was already every day looking to see where his son was at. Where he at? Where he at? Thank you, Lord. I just thank you for coming back home. I'm so glad I know he's coming home. I know he's coming home. 
Yes. And he ran. Yes. He ran to him. God ran to you. Ah. Thank you, Lord. You ain't understanding his love, you all. Even in your mess, he ran to you. And he grabbed him. He didn't care what he was in the big style. And he grabbed him. And he put him back in his authority and gave him a put a ring on his finger and a robe on his back. That's the message Jesus was trying to explain in a parable. To let us know that's how the Father's love. God so loved the world that he gave you a gift. And it was his only begotten son. Yahshua. Say Yahshua. That's the name salvation. That is your healer. That is your deliverer. That is your, your, your prosperity. Everything about this salvation is in Jesus. Amen? And he's full of grace and truth. The truth is grace. Grace and truth, they go together. You can't talk about truth without talking about grace. You can't talk about grace without being, being not the truth. You got to learn to understand. And so what we've been taught on the religion is that grace is this little sleazy way that you can do whatever you want to do. Let me tell you something. When you really understand grace, you won't sin like you think you are. See, somebody taught us that you can do whatever you want to do and it's okay. No, there are consequences behind everything you do in this earth. Y'all know that. There are consequences even in physical sense. Keep eating the wrong things and watch what happens. Keep beating up on people and shooting at people you're going to get some bullets back. This is how our life is. That's how life is designed. Amen? So there are consequences behind sin. But grace is never sleuthy or cheesy or breezy. Now, people bring it that way. But once you understand this love and really start receiving this love, let me tell you something. Love not only covers a multitude of sin, but watch this. The goodness of God causes you to repent. It'll make you turn around for how you used to live. You say, man, I'm not getting high no more. No, I ain't. Uh-uh, that's a grace, that's an empowerment in my weakness. When I'm weak, then he's strong. I'm, I'm going to finally empty myself out. Lord, I'm tired of feeling this way. I'm tired of getting high. I'm tired of drinking. I'm tired of every time laying in the bed and then coming back. Laying in the bed and then coming back. And ooh, I did it again. Listen, grace will turn your life around. Titus tells us that grace will teach you how to live sober and righteous in this present world. Don't tell me grace will change your life. I'm a living witness. Grace will make you not ever commit uh, adultery. Grace will make you run home to the one that you love. Grace will make you live right and love right. Amen? Amen. I, I, I have very, a whole lot of imperfection when it comes to fathering and husband. Husband thinking, what? <laughs> but my reliance is upon my weakness. I don't know what to do. But my eyes are on you. Husband and wives, get to a place where you become weak. Paul understood that. That's why he went to God three times to say, I need some help. And this is what God answers to him. What was it, somebody? Why would he answer him like that? When you come to him, what is he saying to you? I want you to hear the right voice. I don't want you to hear the voice of a stranger. We're going through an open door. We're going through this door called grace. And you're being led in and out into the pasture. But you got to know the voice that you're hearing. You got to know. He didn't have to hear. Let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. You got to know what he's saying in these last days. He's saying, I love you. Don't you dare. I know what you're dealing with. I know what you're struggling with. Come on. Let's go on out to the pasture. You know what that's going to change your life. Amen? All right. Now watch this. I'm going to show this to you. Because it's going to change your life. When Jesus died on that cross and victory was won, he issued in, he issued in a new covenant. Say a new testament. Yes. This, this is what that means. That The Bible says that Jesus, the, the Holy Ghost was not yet given because Jesus had not yet been glorified. Until Jesus was glorified, died, went into hell, resurrected, sat at the right hand of the Father, we could never receive the Holy Ghost because he had not yet been glorified. But when he paid the price as the precious Lamb of God that would take away the sin, not sins, but the root of it all, the sin of the world. And he came and did that. And from that point on, now he gave us access as Christians as we believe on his sacrifice into the holies of holies. This is where I want to get y'all at. And then we'll, we'll do a, I'm going to do a lot of teaching on this. It's going to help some of you all. Because now you're going to see Jesus' journey. And you're going to learn how to interpret it and prioritize it in the right way. How many ready to prioritize this word in the right way? Amen. I'm tired of the Bible stories. 
I'm tired of the Bible story. They sound good. Where is the words the real enlightenment and revelation out of it in grace? Amen. They sound good. They feel good for a minute. It's almost like crack. They feel good. You never find that first hit again. You can't find it no more. But the problem is that's what happens even in religion. We get bound up by a lot of good things that emotionally t uh, bring us to a place, but never spiritually take us to the destination we need to be in. Amen? Amen. Here we go. So Jesus said this, and I'm talking about divine priority. Say divine priority. Divine priority. Come on, say it aloud, church, please. Divine, divine priority. priority. Jesus said, seek ye first what you are. The kingdom of God. The what? The kingdom of God. Say it again. The kingdom of God. And and what will be added to you? All these All things. All these things shall be added to you, right? Yes. Yeah, that's what he said? Yes. So let, let's, let's look at this. Go to Acts 20 to go real quick. Acts 20, I want you to see something here. Because I want now I'm going to bring you, at this time when Jesus was saying this, this was the Beatitudes. This is part of the Beatitudes in Matthew 6. Say Beatitudes. Yes. That's how your attitude should be. That's what he was teaching on. But he was on the Mount of Beatitudes. I and mean, what he was doing was he was sharing from his, his beginning of his ministry to the Sermon on the Mount. He was saying all the things that blessed are those that are pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. And he went on and he went on into this. And he said, why are you worried like the Gentiles were? He was speaking to the children of Israel. He was speaking to those that should have known. So as he was speaking, he's not yet been glorified. You got to get this now. Because I'm going to show you how to begin to really seek God in the proper priority. Seeking his kingdom and his righteousness so these things can be added to your life. Because I'm being honest with you. I had came to a place in my life where I was about to backslide. This wasn't when I was home. This was when I was in prison. Because I kept putting God first in everything I was doing. But it wasn't nothing added to my life. And I started getting frustrated. And I said, wait a minute, God. You said if I seek you first in the kingdom... All these other things will be added to me, what the Gentiles worry about, what they're going to eat, what they're going to drink. And I started getting frustrated. I don't think I'm the only one that ever did that. Anybody else, else went into this, to this probe of trying to seek God as hard as you could, seek God first, and only to find out that things weren't being added to your life? Amen. So, so, so all of a sudden, you get to this plateau of, well, I'm going to still go to church and I'm going to still love. But something in your heart, something you and I was dealing with because it wasn't being added. So I want to share that with you. So it's going to give me a breakthrough today. You can get a breakthrough. Listen to this, you all. I just told you about the glorification of Jesus. I'm going to show you something with Paul. He was speaking about his ministry. He was about to be attacked. And he said, none of these things move me. The attacks that were coming against, about to come against him. Neither count I my, my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy in the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus. Watch this. To testify. This is what I'm trying to say. Say testify. Come on, say it again. Say it loud. So watch this. He was going to testify. He was, his, his job in ministry, and nothing, nothing else moved him but to testify of the gospel of the grace of God. That's the good news of the grace of God, the grace of Christ. Now keep going. I don't want you to miss this. And now, he said, Behold, I know that you all, among whom I go preaching the kingdom of God, stop. Now he's testifying of the grace of God, yet he's preaching the kingdom of God. Don't you miss this now. This is the key. This is the crutch that we're about to share. He's giving a testament or a testimony or testifying of God's undeserved favor, which is the good news. But he's proclaiming how God operates. The kingdom of God is the way of king domain or king's domination or king's dominion. The kingdom of God is God's way of doing what he does. So he said, as I proclaim how God does things, I'm testifying of the good news of God's undeserved favor to mankind. Y'all right. get this? Right. Now, earlier, as he was broken up, uh, as Jesus was on the earth, before he was glorified, he told the Israelites and those Jews and those Pharisees and Sadducees that first of all, you got to seek first the kingdom of God. He was sharing with them priority. But he hadn't, they hadn't got the revelation of the testimony of God's grace that when Jesus would die on that cross and take all the law and would die for us so that we would, he would fulfill all the law and say, watch this, it's finished for you. The only, watch this, don't you mean, don't you miss this? The only thing you have to do, everything that fulfills all of the law and the prophets is the love of God. That's grace. 
He said, you want to fulfill all the law? Walk in the love of God. You can't walk in the love of God without God loving you first. How can you give out what you don't have on the inside of you? That's why he said, we love because he first loved us. You must receive his love in abundance, church. God is ready for you to receive his grace and his love and kindness like never before. He's ready to pour it out on your life even when you don't deserve it. Even when you've been out in the pigsty, you know you've been living wrong. You know you've been making bad decisions. God has said, I'm waiting on you today. I'm ready for you to come home. I know you made bad decisions, but I love you that much. Amen? I died on the cross. God so loved us. Say so loved us. You can't take the soul out of there. He loved you so much that he gave his only begotten son. Even while you were yet in sin, Christ died for you. Even while you weren't thinking about him, the death was already sacrificial for you and I and ready for you to receive it. You got to end prayer. Hallelujah. So that's good. How does this apply to me? How does seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Say his righteousness. Paul said this, Romans 1 16, baby. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Don't y'all miss this? It's the gospel of grace. You can't miss it. That's in Galatians 1. The gospel of Christ is the grace of Christ. He said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Why? Because it is the power of God. It's the power of God unto what you are. Unto what? Now watch this. Don't y'all miss this? The gospel, Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm going to show you how to put this together. For it is the power of God unto what? So the gospel of Christ is the power unto, of God unto salvation to them that believe, right? The Jew first, then to the Gentile, right? So watch this. How can you not tie this in? It's the power of God in the salvation, the gospel of Christ. For it is by grace that you've been saved. That's the power of God unto your salvation. Anybody got that? Come on, y'all don't lose y'all. If you're not in your word, you'll, you'll get lost. But many of you heard these scriptures. That's why you got to get on Bible Reveal. That's why we got to start learning how to study together. If not, you'll count this. You know, you don't know nothing and you it, it ain't fine to you. Then what you do is just like me. I don't play tennis, so I don't like tennis. Never try it. But I just say, nah, I ain't messing with that. Anybody ever need that? No, nah, I don't like that. Never need it. Never try it. Because I ain't messing with it. Because I am unfamiliar with it. Some of you are on familiar ground. And God said, you want to be familiar with this because this is the good news. This is your New Testament revelation. Outside of that, you play in church and you're going to be mad at God and you'll never receive what he has for you. You'll keep thinking you seek him first and you'll have a, 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 a three months of being on time and loving God and coming to church and the next three months, man, shut up. Can't even listen to me no more. Can't even hear nothing. Why? Because we don't know we we're, not, we're not engaging ourselves into what God is showing us. Church, I want to encourage you. We're in a season where the rubber is meeting the road. And we have to pray together. We have to study together. We have to bond together like never before. If we don't, watch this. If we don't, but we are. If we don't, but we are. What will happen is, it'll always, it'll always be like a scatter. But I'm telling you today, I speak it over this congregation, and I mean this, that as we come together, you're going to see suddenness in your life. Some of you are at a point where you're almost frustrated. And God said, when you start coming together and gauging yourself, you're going to see a suddenly. I speak that over your life right now. There are going to be a sudden. It's going to be your confirmation that you're in the right place. It'll be a suddenly in your life. Some things you've been waiting on for so long, it's going to happen suddenly. Miraculously, suddenly. Somebody better get this. Miraculously, suddenly. Amen? And it's going to be as, a, as in the form of a Russian mighty wind. God will blow right through you. You're going to say, oh my God, that wasn't me, that was the Holy Ghost. Amen. He going to blow right through this thing and swept everything away that wasn't supposed to be there. And now suddenly, amen. Woo. Glory to God. That's good. I'm receiving that for myself. I'm ready for my Sunday. How many of you ready for your Sunday? I'm tired of the delay. I'm tired of waiting on certain things. It's time to get into my Sunday. And this is what God showed me. When we get to a place where we learn how to prioritize things, God will show us through the eyes of the grace or through the grace glasses and begin to see your new covenant reality. Now, I'm going to give you an example real quick. I'm almost done. I'm give you a good big reality. How many of you know the story about Mary and Martha? Amen. This is what God showed me this morning, y'all. Kevin showed me this morning. Mary was doing what, y'all? 
Sitting at his feet, hearing his word? Yes. Martha was doing what? She was busy serving the Lord. Ain't no wrong with her serving the Lord, but she was just busy, right? Mm -hmm. This is what God said. Byron, I shared that because there was an account that happened to them while I was on the earth. He said, but I'm glorified now, son. He said, quit telling people to sit at my feet when they're seated with me. All right now. <laughs> he said, quit. He said, we got to stop this, John. He said, quit telling people to sit at my feet when God has raised them up in Ephesians 2 and seated us in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You got to know your authority. You got to know your positioning. You got to know really where you are. Because if not, you'll keep begging and praying. And watch this. The spirit is the spirit of truth. That's a lie. He, can't, he cannot confirm that lie. I don't care if you've been preached the wrong way. I taught that story. If you see that in speak, you're going to miss it. Because you can't see yourself seated with him in heavenly places. All right. Amen. Wow. Hallelujah. What would happen if you quit falling at the feet of Jesus and get seated where you're supposed to be with your big brother and understand who you really are in Christ? You know what it would happen? Because this is how David said it. David said, I, I get kind of stirred up when I heard this. My Lord, God, that Father, said to my Lord, Jesus. David got a revelation out of worship. He said, my Lord, he saw God saying to his Lord, Jesus, Sit in my right hand. All right. But this did you go to good part, y'all. Until I do what? Make your enemies your footstool. footstool. Right. Yes. When you get seated at the yes. place, see, seated is a, is a position of rest. When you get to that place, this is what God is taking us through this door. When you get seated in that rest, you can wait until God make your enemies your footstool. Some of the warfare that we're doing, all you got to do is this. <laughs> God wants you to do it. But this is what we do. A bill do. Or whatever situation, we get to move it out of our position. Your position is to know by faith that I'm seated with Christ. God is saying to some of you, be still and sit down. He said, be still and know that I'm who? God. If you don't get seated with him, you'll never see the enemy under your feet. He'll always get you to move it. He'll get you always into performance. That's what religion does. It keeps us having to do something. Well, I got to pray a little long. Now I'll get saved. He'll speak to your heart. The problem is being, we, we, we've given our requests and our supplications. I'm going to teach on prayer. And you'll understand why men are always to pray. I always thought with Dad, I took it as a cliche. I took it as if, how can I pray all the time? <laughs> Am I the only one thing like this? Me and I always to pray, all right, I ain't even really lie. I know I can't pray all the time, because this, this was my mindset of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. You know, some of us even got to have our posture all the time. Father, in Jesus' name. You can't do that all day. You're going to lose time. You're going to lose ground. You're going to lose your family. Yes, you will. You're going to lose your husband. You're going to lose your wife. You're going to lose your children. So how do I pray at all times? Prayer is a posture, and it's a lifestyle, church. Prayer is giving and receiving. It's communication. Sometimes your prayer is just listening to God. As you speak to God, He speaks back to you. But you know what we do? We do like we always do. We call God. We call on Him. Dear Heavenly Father, hey, yes, son. Here, as soon, soon as He calls, we talk to Him and don't even let Him respond back. Father, blah, 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 I want you to do this. I want you to do that. Blah, 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 blah. Hold on. Can I, speak? can I speak to you? Hold on. Can you get still so I can talk to you? Now, it would be so rude if somebody called you and did you like that every day. If you called, if you called me every day or if I called you every day and say, Hey, what's up, man? How you doing, man? Everything all right, all right? Yeah, it's cool. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you a chance to speak back to you. I can't even respond to what he's asking. Hey, how you doing? Hey, I won't even let him respond to how he's doing. How do you think God feels? Because prayer is just not giving, it's receiving. Some of you need to be still and know that he's God. He wants to speak to you. And it, as, you, as you get seated in him, he told, he told Elijah, he said, you know what? You, you, you did all these great works and feats that I, I did before you. And people was amazed on how the fire burned up all the sacrifices. As soon as this little woman came to you and said, I'm getting you, you ran and you was ready to die. He said, but he got him up under a little juniper tree. And he got him up under that tree and fed him with the ravens. Say ravens. ravens. He fed him with the birds, you all. The fowls of the air. 
And then finally, this is what God told him. He said, hey, buddy, I'm not in the sti I'm not in the thunder or the lightning or the earthquake, but I'm in the what? Still small voice. You know why he told him that? Because he really thought he was the only one really serving God. Sometimes we can get so much in the works that we think we're the only one. You know, I'm the only one doing all of this. I'm the only one. Ain't nobody that God said, man, I need to get you still. <laughs> there's so many fire, there's so many fireworks in this place. <laughs> Come on, Brother Wayne. Wayne said, boy, look, here's a fireworks all in this place. All we need is a fire one in this deal and set it ablaze. Just get that steam just a little bit. I'm ready to hit the, uh, Brother Nine's steam. Boom! I'm ready to hit Courtney's steam. get a fire blaze and see the explosion of what God has put on the inside. Sometimes you don't know what's packed on the inside of you until the fire comes. Come on, y'all. Somebody, y'all need to know this. Sometimes you don't know what's on the inside of you until the fire comes. And then it opens up what's really on the inside of you. Amen? I prophesy to you that there's a fire coming in this place. There's a burning coming in this place. It's going to roll up in your life. It is going to change. It's going to shift you. Then you ain't going to be in a hole still because it's going to explode. It's going to rise up in your life. You're going to go into open places in your life. I'm speaking over you today. Somebody needs to receive it. Amen? You got a hand I got one more word. I got one more word. I'm going to give it in there. In Luke 14, there's a parable of how he prepared everything. Grace has prepared everything for your life, for life and godliness. Grace has already made everything available to you. Just like God did with Adam. God made Adam on the sixth day. Before that, everything else was already put in motion. God is Jireh. He provided everything for Adam. He created man. He created Eve. And then he set them in what he had already created. He set them in provision. Amen? Why do you think God ain't the same yesterday, today, and forever? That's why he sent his son so that he can now, by grace, set you back into provision that's already been made ready for you. Amen? Is that good news for somebody? God is set, getting ready to set you in what's already been made ready for your life. So here's a parable that Jesus gave while he's on the earth. He said the, the, he made a big he made a big supper and made it all, invited everybody who was supposed to come. He invited all of them. He was talking about the Jews and the, uh, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. But this is for you and I today, too. You getting the invitation today. And this is what happened. He said, I'm telling you today, the supper is now ready. Say now ready. Say now ready. Yes. There's nothing God trying to do for you has already been done through Jesus Christ. So everything is now ready for you. But the problem was, there were three different things in this parable. People made excuses. One of the main excuses we make is about possessions. I got something I got to do. I got, I got land and I did. Whatever your possessions may be, a lot of times you, you see why people don't come for what's now ready, what God has made available for them. And sometimes you'll be distracted from the very thing that you're trying to seek after. That person was looking for through possession, trying to get possessions, but yet grace had made everything available. Everything was not ready. The next one was, they said, I bought an oxen. That represents labor. An oxen represents labor. Some of you don't even realize, it ain't your job that's going to make you through for the in these last days. What's about to take place, jobs ain't going to be worth nothing. I'm not trying to put you in front. I'm trying to get you in faith. I'm trying to put your, your, your sights on the right thing before it hit. Don't, don't, don't say Pastor he's trying to give you a scary movie. This is prophecy. This will come to pass. You, you, you and I should be free. This is what he said. He said, uh, but don't take no heart to this thing. Don't you let your heart be troubled about this. Why? Because you believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house of many matches. I done already set it up for you. He said, that's what I said for you in heaven. I've already set it up for you today. Amen. It's set up for you. That's good news today. Amen. So my, my job is to prepare you to get seated in heavenly places. And begin to get your mind off this natural world. He said, set your affections on things that are above, not on the things that are below. Right. Your life is hid with Christ. Unless you ain't hid in him. Unless you don't step outside of your watch. When you hid in Christ, you, you behind your big brother. Exactly. You every now and then you look out, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> you know, before he was there, he was like, you were running. You got to your big brother, you get behind him and say, what? I said, <laughs> that's what we need, we need to be here in Christ, amen? amen? We need to get behind our big brother. We need to get in Christ again and understand that in these last days, don't be afraid. Don't you fear not. 
It's going to happen, though. There's going to be an economic breakdown. There's going to be wars and rumors of war. There's going to be earthquakes and hurricanes. There's going to be perilous, dangerous times. Some are going to depart from the faith. Y'all better catch this. Not you. Because you get what you need. <laughs> Some churches are going to close down that you never would have thought. But Oasis of Love is going to get what they need. God set this up for such a time as this. Some of you don't even realize, when God called me out, y'all thought, uh, I, I, I ain't did y'all no favor. He did me a favor. When I got here, Pastor Alden and Sister Teresa brought me to my favor. <laughs> Where I can find a good thing and be able to do what I've been called to do. Amen. Took her, took her with me, took a full circle to bring us back. You thought he left? You, th you thought he left you? He had to get some things in her. So she can know who she is and begin to walk in what she's supposed to be walking in so that we can come back and all of us can start walking in what God called us to walk in. I see the picture. God has shown me the picture. I got this. I just told uh, 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 Dr. Pat, everything God puts in your life is always, I don't care if you bring you before somebody that's on drugs or homeless. When you step to that person, it's a balance. It ain't never out of balance. I don't care if you got everything you need. It's something you need from that person. I've always looked at people like that. Because God showed me that it's out of balance. If you look like you are bigger than them or higher than them, then they can't receive from you. But when you come to the place where you can get whatever that God has from them, because it's a gift, that's why he called them. From the foundation of the world, he knew they had something on the inside. So when you come, you come with the balance and say, you know what? God, bring me down to that level. I don't want them to think that I'm higher than them, but I want them to see that what God has given me, and I want to receive what God has given you. Amen? Amen. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful, God? The last one was this. Don't miss it, y'all. Possessions, labor. The next one is, I got a wife and I can't come. The other one said, excuse me. <laughs> he said, I got a wife and I can't come. <laughs> Read it for yourself. I got a wife and I can't come. Relationships will make you say no. Y'all better don't you miss this now. That's why Jesus gave us the revelation about relationships. That's why Job had to say, you sound like a fool. I ain't riding with you. I'm not going to curse my God in that. Sometimes relationships with people that are closer to you can cause you to make you to make a decision. But you got to get to a point where you can't say I can't. You say I ain't. No. Amen? Right. You got to say I'm going to the table. I'm getting what grace is made ready for me. Amen? So in these last days, I want you to be mindful of your labor, your possessions, and your relationships. You got to prioritize things and put Christ first. You got to put grace first. Grace comes first. People don't come first. Grace comes first. Pastor Cook don't come first. Grace comes first. That's why I'm putting grace in your face. That's the rhyme with it. I'm putting grace in your face. I ain't telling you what you need to do because I don't know what I need to do sometimes. But I need, I depend on this grace. I depend, I depend on his guidance. Amen? Is that good for somebody today? Amen. Play the music, bro. Play the music. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 While we had it, I want y'all to see something because we're going to already have off already kept. This gives a revelation I got this morning to God and put, put some things in my spirit when I saw this, this, this prioritizing. We, we read 2 Corinthians 8. Put it up there real quick. 2 Corinthians 8. And it talks about how uh, Paul was talking about a ministry of grace, of giving. Say giving. This is what I heard. He said before you ever can operate properly in the grace of giving, you got to operate in the grace of living. You must live this gospel and understand it. Then your giving is going to shift. Your giving will never shift because money is, a, is, a, is a, a defense in our earth. That's what the Bible says in Ecclesiastes. It's a defense. But I'm telling you today, when you start living under this grace, you'll start learning how to give under this grace. But I'm going to show you a principle. Say principle. principle. I read this and I got it. I got it, bro. Moreover, brother, we do read to you, watch this, the grace of God bestowed upon the churches of Macedonia. He was talking about ungiving. This grace that was given to them, ungiving. Look what happened. How is that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality? He was saying these people ain't have no money, but they gave out of liberality. Then he goes on to say, I don't read all that. God loves a cheerful giver. Amen? Amen. <laughs> what would happen? If you start living cheerfully, yeah. Yeah. what would happen if you start living gracefully? Yeah. 
What would happen even in your hard times and in the deep poverty of your life or you don't have a situation in your life where you're lacking something in your life but yet out of the abundance of the grace that's on in your life, you start living out of, of grace. Amen? You start to be a cheerful liver. I'm still coming to church. Don't make no difference what go on. I, I'm not mad at God. I'm going to be a cheerful liver. Amen? See, some of you don't mind trying to be a cheerful giver, but I'm going to tell you something. It ain't going to work for long if you're not a cheerful liver. You got to have to live under this grace before you can give under this grace. I'm a living witness. You got to learn how to, you gotta give it all to God. You got to live under this grace. Then you are able to do like this. It ain't money. ain't no problem no more. But you got to learn how to live under this grace. Quit trying to give under this grace and that live under this grace. What will happen is it will backfire in your face. And you go right back to seek ye first the kingdom of God and you wonder why you're upset. Amen? Y'all get it? Is that good? God loves a church for what? Yeah. What's the other one, Kevin? Liver. <laughs> Not this liver, y'all. Come on, a triple liver. <laughs> he likes a triple liver too, but it's not if you mess up something. But I'm telling you right now, God loves a cheerful liver. Start living with a smile, church. Start even when it's hard. Don't, don't let everybody see it. Don't let it always show. Don't let everybody know you're miserable. Come over here and, and, and do it cheerfully. Say, God, help me to help my countenance today. Help me to come here and smile when I don't want to smile. Yeah, help me come here and give somebody a hug who I don't want to hug. Amen? Amen. We're going to start doing some icebreakers, Pastor. God told me it's time for icebreakers. Say icebreakers. Ice anybody know what icebreaker is? Yes, huh? Ice Tell me what icebreaker is. Somebody. Hmm? Huh? Yeah, that's a piece of gum. You're right. I can't even <laughs> You're right. I swear. But what is an actual thing? That's what somebody did. An icebreaker is to break the ice where there's been a coldness or richness. Yeah. You break the ice. Yeah. God told me in this season we're going to do some icebreakers. Icebreakers mean you ain't going to be doing the same things you did. We're going to learn how to get around people you don't want to be around. You're going to sit next to people that you don't want to sit next to. You know why? Because we're going to have some icebreakers. This church is merging, and we're going to learn how to break the ice. Amen? You know how you break the ice? By make, making a decision, doing something different that don't feel good. When you start doing it out of obedience, you'll learn how to live cheerfully and learn how to say, God, help me. Help me to break through this thing. Amen? I'm be ready for a breakthrough. I'm ready for a breakthrough. I'm ready to break some ice with Jesus. Sometimes the breakthrough ain't nothing but just breaking the ice. Amen? Amen. Amen. Was that a blessing to you? But at this, at this time, if there's anybody who is going to do a corporate prayer, and then we're going to get ready to be cheerful givers. Amen? Amen. Cheerful givers. Say cheerful givers. Cheerful givers. Amen? Amen. 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 We have an obligation. This church has lights. This church has uh, bills to pay. At the same time, we have things that we must be obligated to be able to take care of God's house. So it should be what? Meat we're at. Meat we're at. Now they ain't talking about no chicken or no pork or no beef. He's talking about some resources. Yeah. There should always be resources for the house. Say resources. resources. Our job is to do what we're supposed to be called to give it to the house so there can be resources in the house. Amen. Yeah. How can you ever go outside the house if you don't have resources for the house? It's a lot of stuff that need to be done in this house, church. I'm, come on, I'm just keeping it real with you. It's a lot of stuff that need to be done in the house. And I'm, I'm thanking God not only for the resources, but I'm thanking God for the favors that are going to come. I believe there's going to be things that are going to come to this church as we start living under this grace. You'll see the, the, this undeserved favor coming from God and man. Amen. God start touching people's heart. People start having dreams. You hear me? People start having dreams. Y'all understand that? There are going to be things that are going to come your way. It's undeserved. How many ready for some undeserved faith? Amen. I'm, 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 thinking, I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking about somebody named Patricia. Anybody in this church named Patricia? God told me to bless them. Yeah, you can see your hand go. This is what God's going to be doing. He said, you know what? I, 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 anybody here? What? No, Raven. Raven? Is there a Raven here? And you, you raise your hand. And you don't even realize God's ready to bless the people. Amen. There's going to be open doors for you in this season, I'm telling you. And you going to be, it's going to be testimonies to our prayer life, our consistency in coming together, and being one in prayer. So I'm going to end it with this, and then we're going to pray the one prayer, and then we're going to get ready to give. Get ready to get engaged. Amen? God is putting the fire under your feet in this season. Get ready to engage yourself. Amen? What's going to happen is there will be a sudden in your life. I'm speaking that prophetically. If it don't happen, then listen. If the words of a prophet fall to the ground, it ain't true. It ain't, it ain't right. 
I speak that by, by faith that I know in, 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 as a fact that this will be Sundays in your life when we all come together. Amen? Amen. 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 Everybody say it. Make a confession with me today. Hallelujah. There's nobody, if somebody that's not saved, you can come up to the front and we can simply lead you into salvation and to this great gift. It looks like that I see everybody. I think everybody's saved. If you're not, you have the opportunity to come up for salvation. But if not, we want to make a declaration today. Let's just lift our hands before God and say, Jesus, Jesus. I love you. I love you. I thank you, I thank you. For, a new for a new and living way. And living way. Thank you for prior helping me to prioritize. My life. Thank you for your grace. I receive your grace. I receive of your fullness. Grace and more grace. In abundance of grace. With the gift of righteousness. Will I reign in life? I speak over my life. And everybody I encounter. That we win. That gives me the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You got a hand, praise. Amen.